Hello, I'm Timothy Hobbs, and today I'm going to be doing another session of live coding for Vegan Buddies. Last week, I was setting up the lobsters, uh, Django Rail or not Django, a uh, Ruby on Rails uh, web application, and I was customizing it to uh, work as a kind of space invite-only space for mentors uh, that would be mentoring on the Vegan Buddies app. And the reason why I'm starting with this is that I thought that it might be nice to be able to invite mentors uh, earlier before the app is, is published because that way we can build a community of mentors and then when we publish the app there will actually be people to mentor the new vegans because what's the point of the app if there's no mentors available? And so I was going to try to build the mentor community first. In order to do that I have to uh, kind of set it up. Of course, I could just create a v Facebook group, and indeed there is a Facebook group, uh, um, a Facebook page that you can join if you want. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to even show it here. Um, vegan Buddies Facebook don't know if it works this way. Um, <laughs> Hbox override, does that work? Okay, uh, no, that does not work. So you can't visit um, the Facebook page without logging into Facebook, which kind of makes it... Uh, I, dig it. I guess this is actually a different page. I don't know. Maybe it has a space in it. No, it doesn't want to let you in. So uh, the one of the reasons why uh, the uh, Facebook page wouldn't be a good community building effort would be because Facebook isn't available to non-Facebook users, such as this virtual machine. So. To get started, I'll just load up the what I have running. So uh, lobsters, the Docker lobsters, Docker compose up. It'll load eventually, and I added a couple of mm, tickets that I need to finish doing to change uh, the page. So the easiest ticket to start out with is that we need to uh, link to the invites page from the home page and we also need to kind of update the text for I guess I closed Firefox entirely we need to update the text on the invite page and we need to create a link to the invite page uh, right here I think mm. So basically, right here I want a new link that would be invite. I guess all of the other links can say, stay the same, so I need to find out where these links are defined. Um, and I guess I'll try just grepping for Uh, threads maybe uh, I need to actually be in the in the right repository
index.html.erb that sounds very promising but it's your threads and this is threads that's confusing maybe it's this one threads saved uh-huh and inbox super so this is what I need to change I need to go ahead and uh, I guess I'll put it in front of inbox. I don't know if I should put it in front or after. I don't think it really matters that much. And how is threads path defined? It's not defined in any reasonable way. Okay, and so invite How do I find the Maybe I'll try searching for threads path and I'll see where that's defined and maybe the invites path will be defined in the same place. No, it's not defined anywhere. And I guess I also need to just like do that and see if I can even modify this, this application in any reasonable way because I haven't actually started modifying it. I don't understand how the build process works yet. So mm. Mm. We have a make file and the make file does this build and it also has a docker compose file. I'm not really sure what the difference is. Um, I presume that rebuilding these images every time is going to be incredibly tedious. So if I'm actually going to do serious development, I'm probably going to have to improve this, this system. So it's going to be much, much faster, right? Uh, it's already been a couple of seconds and it hasn't yet CH owned the lobsters directory. And doing that every time I make a trivial change in testing it is going to be totally ineffective. Um, so I did that and if I then do docker, I don't know how to restart it thing um, restart one and I don't know if restarting it will use the new container but the application is called app I don't know if it's going to use the new image that I just built I hope it is
Okay. No changes. And so now I don't know if my changes were unsuccessful or I forgot to save the file or uh, if it didn't use the new build or what's going on here. So you're going to try stopping it, RMing it, and then starting it. I don't know what the difference between up and start is. Create and start to containers, start services. So it's like running cron jobs, it's doing database migrations, it's generating a new secret key, all during the startup process. This is not efficient. Okay, so that was successful. Um, and if I go and... Which one is which? going to take so long to stop. So if I were to do this and then this and then this and then this wait maybe i just want start actually maybe this is the the loop and i can do time i don't know if i can do time on entire line not really clear on how bash works in that but I guess it's, it's relevant. Um, so invite path is not defined. Um, and so I need to find out like threads path is used once here. And that's it. So how is it defined? Maybe I'll search for threads. It's probably got some kind of heuristic for deciding what these variables are called. Mm. Route sounds really promising, but it looks like it looks like it's not defining the threads thing in a way that a heuristic would be easier to, easy to create because it's defining it as forward slash threads um, is redirected to comments. Uh huh. I don't even understand that. Okay. Just waiting for Space Max to install the configurations for Ruby since I've never used Ruby before. Surprisingly large amount of code required to to do Ruby. Maybe it's doing all sorts of crazy like code completion stuff. I'm not sure. Uh, 
Okay, so that looks useless in terms of figuring out Not even sure what this Puma thing is, but it also looks like it's not what I'm looking for. I really don't see anything that would define thread, so... So the closest thing is this, and so I'm going to try that. It occurs to me that the, uh, hmm, I don't know if, if this page is linked to anywhere that I know, uh, know of. I'm trying to find out where that like index page even was. Maybe it's in home. Must be app views layouts application.html. Okay. So now I should be thinking about how to make this this loop faster. Um, wait. Um, why did it fail? Okay, so it needs to be an up. Now I'm really confused because it seems to me like no change is now visible. Like what what happened? No foo bar baths, no invitations link, nothing.
Did I, oh wait, did I delete the foobar baths actually? Yeah, I deleted it. Why is this so long to stop? So one way I could make this faster would be to mount uh, the lobster source code into a volume in the Docker container and hope that that works. And that would mean that I would need to go and change the Docker comp the the uh, Docker entry point to something other than I don't even see the doc. So the Docker entry point is not listed in the Docker compose file. It's listed in the Docker file, I guess. And so Docker entry point dot sh. It's actually listed in the the lobsters source code. Is it? No, I don't see it there. Um Okay, so here it's defined and I think that I would start out by force overriding it so that this um, entry point, so that we were running bash rather than this entry point. And then I would try manually running the entry point. That would be the first step. And um, I need to also look if what the working direct if it's like deciding which files to use based off of the working directory or what worked or lobsters and lobsters is taken from lobsters okay aha uh -huh, i see so they're combining the lobsters directory and the docker assets directory into the lobsters directory in the docker container and the docker assets directory contains things like the docker entry point and the lobsters directory contains things like um the lobsters source code and in the Docker assets, we don't just have the entry point, we have the fav icon and um, some, uh-huh. And so we need to be able to figure out how to uh, customize the lobster source code and still have it combined. And I think the best way to do that would be through symlinking and mm-hmm okay uh 
Uh huh. So. Uh. So the link worked, but it's the linking to the wrong page. Um. And the correct page. Uh, and it's just the formatting's off. I need to do something with the CSS. So here, class inbox corner. And that's probably somehow affecting the rest of the link twos. Mm-hmm. Solve it for now by just moving it past the inbox, and that should solve it, given that the rest of the links are in the right place. And I need to go ahead and Sign up invite. Uh huh. I don't know how they they create those path things for multi-stage paths, uh, maybe though. Maybe I'll actually look it up on the internet. This looks like somebody with the same issue. When providing a verb route to route set, it will make a best guess as to the controller action and helper method name. It does require at least two segments in the matching path. Otherwise, you have to supply the controller action and helper name yourself. For single segment matcher, no slashes in the path. The full definition is required. So they show... For matchers, for a matcher with two or more segments, it will assume the following syntax: foo underscore bar path for foo slash bar. Okay, so um, I was correct in my guess that it was going to use underscores in place of slashes, and so it should be sign up underscore invite page and or path not page so I guess I'll start trying to get it so that this development process is faster uh, by copying from Dopratsenakala, which is another open source application I'm working on, 
and which I already have a setup where I'm using volumes to develop the app. And so I just put the CWD in app V and I'll have to create some symlinks to get that combination of the uh, directories working properly, but at least it should be a start. Uh, so I start by Why is Docker service? Uh, <laughs> that's bizarre. Why is Docker? Why does Nginx require access to Docker? Is it to set up port rerouting? I don't know. That's really weird and totally, totally insecure. Like it requires you to trust this a lot more. It actually makes me kind of creeped out now that I think about it that Docker Compose doesn't warn you about that, that it's totally, you, that you are all of a sudden required to trust the Docker images involved, whereas you'd kind of assume naively that it was safe to run Docker Compose up or build on some untrusted source application. Okay, and finally I need to change the entry point. I think I also do that here, entry point. And Try that. I guess actually changing the entry point wasn't necessarily mm, necessary. I could have changed the work dir and then that used exec to set up things set up the rest by hand <laughs> but this should work Okay, so it didn't work, but I'll just get rid of that entry point thing and wait, I need to I need to figure this out. Um, I need to figure out how to make it so that this doesn't end up running things so maybe I can do that and maybe that's enough and I need to restart again That was actually the wrong, 
I need to do lobsters like that. Hopefully this will be the last time I do the long restart loop and I can start setting up the fast restart loop. The tight loop. Uh, so, so it says that there's no config file for the database, and so what I need to do is I need to move this over to another uh, window or another workspace, and that's the reason why I do that is so that I can have two windows side by side, and in my second window, I'll go Docker PS to see the Docker containers that are running Docker. Uh, And then I'll do docker exec into the container. Um, so we have bash. And we need to go and make a symlink from the things in docker assets to ooh that's annoying um maybe i can actually do this outside of docker to be honest Okay, so mm. Hopefully that'll do a relative link and not an absolute link. And the relative link will work. Oh, that was wrong. Okay, so this is even more complicated than I thought. Oh, uh, wait. Um, so it's not actually... Um, Somehow it's merging those. I didn't realize that was even possible in Docker. I didn't, I guess, understand the... The semantics.
Yeah, so I've I've done the symlinks wrong. And the question I have now is how am I supposed to do this properly? So I have So it's like overwriting those files. That's really, really impractical and inconvenient. Uh, but I don't want to try to figure out why that's necessary. I'm not going to learn. Uh, to do Ruby just um, so that I can reconfigure this. Um, So we have a puma.ruby file. And that's literally a configuration for like the ports and stuff. So that really needs to be overwritten. I think the best way to do this is to actually overwrite it, actually copy those things over, and then uh, like force copy them over and have a dirty git uh, set up and just ignore those changes when committing. Okay, I think I can manage that. Um... Hopefully that's the correct uh, syntax. And now I can go ahead and rerun this. Entirely unnecessary copying now. The only file that's not in a volume that I'm actually using is the docker exec or docker entry point file but whatever hopefully i'm only waiting once okay so it's unhappy again Permission denied. Uh huh. Mare. So I need to figure out how to make it so that the user in the side of the Docker container has permission to write to the volume. Or I need to. Uh, figure out how to so maybe I'll just make it so that dot bundle is world writable uh-huh temp okay I'll try making temp world write write writable if that doesn't help And I'm going to go ahead and, since obviously this isn't going to be as easy as one would hope, 
I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this copy just to make things a little bit faster. It's still slow, weird. Hopefully I'm not going to have to deal with local installation of dependencies as well. That's quite, 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 quite likely. Um, Seems like they're doing this a little bit higher up. Another error. DB, okay. Wait, why is it writing to DB? Is it writing to or reading from? Is it not able to even read the files? Mm-hmm. Seems like it's a lot slower this time. I'm not really sure why. Oh, is it slower because ch modding everything uh, touched the files and therefore Docker thinks that it needs to rebuild everything? I think so. Okay. This is going to take a while. So in the meantime, um, What can we do? So, obviously this is not going to be connected. Um, so we're trying to uh, make it so that there would be a link to the invitations page from uh, the main page from the top bar so people could quickly invite new mentors and uh, I need to change the text for this so it's not pass but something more
now that you So I need to change this text basically. Now that you are a member, you can invite people you think would be a good fit. This is available anytime from uh, settings, a hash invite your settings page. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that sentence because it's no longer important. And I need to think about how we want it to work because is it going to be the case that any mentor can invite any uh, invite new mentors or are only certain people going to be able to invite new mentors? I think that I actually need to talk to the rest of the team about that. Mm. And that would also affect the line of code that would give a link to the invitations thing. Because of course, if the person can't invite, doesn't have invites enabled, then uh, they shouldn't see the link to sending invitations. Or they should see the link and be redirected to a different page perhaps. Mm. We want to grow our team with mentors while ensuring the safety of our community. We also don't, we also want to avoid giving bad, harmful advice. You can invite new mentors to the team, but make sure that they know about basic dietary needs that vegans such as the need to supplement Vitamin B12. <laughs> and D3. And also the need to ensure they can need to consume a sufficient amount of calcium. We want to grow our team of mentors while ensuring the safety of our community. We also want to avoid giving hardful advice. You can invite new mentors to the team, but make sure they know about basic dietary needs, about the basic the dietary needs that vegans have, such as the need to supplement vitamins B12 and D3, and the need to consume a sufficient amount of calcium. Mentors can, if you know someone who you think would be a good mentor, go 
ahead and send them an invite. You can invite as many mentors as you see fit. Okay. And this is done building. Migrating database. That actually looks better. It looks better. <laughs> Running cron jobs, booting Puma. <gasps> Did it load? Did it load? Could it actually have worked? Invite. Yay! There's an invite link. Cool. And... Okay, so actually this form contains um, so I'm going to delete this sentence is all and I'm also going to figure out how to paragraphize this cool And then I need to go to the black hole and delete. Or maybe I should have it so that the black hole has something like a change log in it so that you don't delete the tickets, but you move the tickets somewhere that they're like re resolved. Okay. So. So what's modified here? Okay, maybe I'll just go ahead and... Oh, frickin' hell. That CH mod is going to get committed. Ah. Okay, so I'm probably going to divide this commit up into two segment. Wait, how would I even do that? Um, So I'm going to unstage that and 
I'm going to go ahead. How did I do that? How would I do this? I made two changes and I want to separate them out. I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's worth it. Wait, I think that, that, um, it actually only, that Git only tracks, uh, the executable bit. So what if I make it so that, um, uh, what if I make it so that I'm not setting that bit because I just like did 777 because it was the easiest thing to do. What if I just unset that executable bit? Um, I can't do it. Um, So let's see, does it even still work? Wait, why? Basically, I lost information when I did that chmod777. I don't know which ones were set as executable previously and which ones were not. But I also know that directories minus x would make it so that directories couldn't be um, listed, which would probably be the reason why, um, or maybe the reason why it's... Uh, having a problem because it shouldn't give you permission denied just because it's not executable. Um, so what I might be able to do is try to figure out which which of the files I did change um, because I didn't change that many files I changed two files actually and I can just copy those changes over to I don't know uh, some scratch buffer really and so I just changed this And I changed this, and I just added one line. And so now I can go ahead and do git checkout dot What what was wrong with the git checkout? Git reset. Okay, so that seems to have worked. 
And now I need to do a chmod command that doesn't set the executable bit for everything. Uh, and... Now I can try restarting everything and seeing if it still works. And I think this shouldn't have, yeah, that didn't end up touching everything because Git only is caring about the executable bit. But it's unhappy, isn't it? Maybe I need to do a slightly different chmod command. Like that. Still unhappy. Fish permission denied to lobsters. So I'm going to look. Schema. Uh huh. It's that chmod didn't work apparently. Um, though it is world readable, right? This is user group world. It's world readable. And so it's actually writing to that. Um, I don't know what the syntax is to make it so that this, um, Uh, you see, I don't want to set like all of the executable bits. So I don't want to, I want to use one of those diff things. I don't want to do 777. I want to do like plus W. Uh, but I want to plus, uh huh, pl G plus W. Or no. Uh, A plus W, maybe. Yeah, that was what I wanted. And now Git status is still happy because only Git only tracks the executable bit. And we'll see if this works now. I'm also curious as to whether schema is on the only file that they're um, is the only file they're tracking. Okay, so um, I think I'm going to actually document my changes and 
So I wonder if I also lost the the overridden files when I did that. Okay, I all I almost certainly did. So, um, I need to do a cp docker assets config. lobsters config star like this okay and I can actually do that and now it'll finish without any problems. So this is one thing you need to do. And the second thing you need to do is to make it so that it's world writable. And that was chmod I'm not sure if the pseudo is going to be necessary for other people. Maybe I'll just leave it in there. Actually, I think it is necessary. Uh, CD like that. You can then run um, the server will launch at the address uh -huh. oh it's still building but it's something failed that looks bad does not look promising Well, I hope this will work, and but I can still copy the address. And Okay, something like that. And now I'll go ahead and commit these changes. Um, I think that the only change to the lobsters thing is those are, are those files that I copied over, so I'm not going to. Um, 
stage them. Uh, I'll stage this though. Not sure how this whole git submodule thing works with branches. I think that I need to, um, in order to push this, I think that I need, uh, well, of course I need to push it so that it's available. And I also think that I need to change somehow the way that the submodule is set up. Uh, Git modules. Um, yeah, so I need to change this so that it's uh, vegan buddies, docker lobsters, and wait, no, like this, vegan buddies, docker lobsters, and then I need to go and fork docker lobsters, um, To, yeah, Docker lobsters. I need to fork this as vegan buddies. Okay, and then I need to go ahead and add this as a remote. Okay, and now I can go and so I'm testing whether the the rebuild worked. Hmm, doesn't like me. Okay, so now I need to re-implement the changes that I s kind of stashed using this really, really um, low-tech stashing mechanism. Or maybe I should try to... Why is that having a problem? What's the problem here? Why does it say staged and unstaged at the same time? Uh-huh. Uh What's the untracked content? Uh... Yeah, so that's fine. And now I can go and try to move this back to where it belongs. So, that's done and I also need to 
application here, scratch, move this there. And Ruby on Rails is apparently quite smart and they automatically like make it so that this link is special, that it underlines when you're at that page. Cool. I didn't know that. That's pretty smart. And now I can go to stage these changes. Um, wait a second. I actually need to... I guess I can do that later. I can stage these changes, so... Unstaged stage changes, DS. Probably shouldn't change the indentation here. Not sure why that happened. Okay, that's good enough. Now that we've done that, I think that I just need to reconfigure the, um, I, I need to fork uh, the lobsters repo and I need to reconfigure the remotes. Fork as vegan buddies. And then I need to go ahead like this, and I need to go to here and change that URL to, wait, I should probably use the HTTPS, like that. And here I need to add a remote, but I need to use the SSH one this time. Wait here. I don't care, they have new commits, but I'll just roll back. Wait, what happened? Um, why is head there? Um, what's going on? Why are we on a detached head? Git branch checkout minus D branch minus git checkout minus B master. And now, now we should be in the right place. Yep. And what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and um, oh, well, I just changed it actually, so I don't need to do anything there. Um,
and now I can go ahead and This is quite the chain of commits, isn't it? Um, Not sure. <laughs> Three different default branch names. It's kind of funny. So this is up to date. This is up to date. Right. Um, hmm. How does this work actually? Like, how does it know which um, 523 and the master? is five two three uh-huh okay and vegan buddies is at one a o one a zero uh okay so Now I'm confused. Where is that Docker Lobsters? How come? Why is it 404ing all of a sudden? Like, that should definitely not 404. Aha, uh -huh, it's a typo. Huh. <laughs> okay, so that can be solved. Git modules, that should solve it. Vegan buddies. Lobsters one a zero, which is the same as a right? Yeah, one a zero. Cool. So, yeah. So what I've done today is I've managed to make it so that I can quickly update um, text or anything else on the in the lobsters uh, application without having to rebuild the docker image just to test that out to make sure you see it's it, this foo right here appears and then I can undo that and refresh the page and it disappears it's actually even better than with Django it's faster and um, so I've made it so that the fast iterative development loop is possible 
and I've also added this invite link and changed the text for the invite page but the main like amount of work was making it so that that was possible to develop quickly and so I'm going to be signing off now I'll be doing another live stream next week at 6 p.m. ish probably later uh, on Tuesday next week and next week I will get into solving more of the roadmap problems so let's take a look at the roadmap uh, black hole feature roadmap and um, OAuth server would be the next step basically and that's that's I remember quite a quite a complicated thing it probably won't be done in a single hour it might take me a while and yeah so I'll see you next week and goodbye